Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm your anchor, Heike Corser. Our first story tonight takes place in a Manchester high school. A student is having a dispute with his sister, and a school resource police officer steps in and perhaps over the line. Hi, my name is Frank Harrington. I go to West High School, and today I got assaulted by a cop. This is a really boring, this is a really boring video so far. Freedom of the press. The U.S. citizen. I'm not going to the. You're crazy. You're crazy. This is, are you kidding me right now? Yeah, we're recording something. You're not supposed to be recording it. How am I not supposed to be recording this? Are you thick in your head? Do you not know this is a freedom as a U.S. citizen in the world? Do you realize I could sue you for thousands and thousands of dollars right now for doing that? See, this is why I'm taping this right here. See this right here? This is why I'm taping. Don't talk to her like that. Hit! I'm videotaping this. Mr. I have a freedom to do this. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. I have on video. I took my sister's purse. I was messing around. She said she didn't want it back. I was going to give it back after lunch. The teachers involved themselves. Uh, said I stole it. My sister said it's no big deal. I'll get it back. Uh, the principal came tried taking it. I told him, no, it's my sister's, and I'll give it back later. He got the detective, and then the te and they said, uh, now you're going to give it back, and I told him, no, the detective took it, gave it to the uh, principal. They both looked through it without permission, and then he said I was suspended, so I asked why I turned around and said, why the fuck am I suspend suspended? The cop turned around, looked at me, jerked me up, uh, shoved me around, slew me, uh, threw me on the table. Uh, took me by the back of the head and rest of my ear shut the fuck up you're under arrest and slammed my mouth on the table And uh, what officer was it? Uh, Detective Murphy After that they uh, brought me back into the principal's office They got got all my stuff from lunch Handcuffed me brought me back into the patio wagon, searched me Took all my stuff threw it in the back. I got in got to the police station. They booked me and uh they pretty much uh, ran my fingerprints. Didn't even, did not read my rights. Tried to uh, f uh, kept asking me to make my own bail. I'm only 17. Told them no, and without my parents' permission. And they put me in the holding cell till someone could get me out. Um, All right. My name is Mike, short for Michael Peru. I go to West High School. I'm a senior. And uh, today at lunch, I was just minding my own business, walking by. And I saw a police officer and an administrator with two teachers approach one of my greatest friends named Frank. And I decided, you know, might as well videotape, see what's going on. So I sat down and videotaped it. Um, momentarily, about 20 seconds later, a couple teachers came up and told me I had no right to videotape it. I can't do this. It's illegal. And I told them I have every right to. It's my constitutional right as a U.S. citizen. And I have every right with the freedom of press to videotape it and express myself in a way of art. And she told me that I had to take it away and go to the office. I told her, you're crazy. I'm not going to the office. She tried to call the op the um, the principal, as and then moments later is when the officer pretty much used excessive force on Frank and smashed his face into a table. So After the incident, I had tried to walk away and I was harassed by multiple teachers and the principal. To they immediately tried to make me give them the information, give them the video, and they tried to retrieve my personal belongings to steal basically the information and delete it so that there could be no evidence and I kind of snaked my way around it by telling them that I only had a couple pictures. They forced me to delete those pictures, however I still have the video evidence. So I nice. kind of like got around it. Um, do you think that what the teachers were telling you was right? To a sense it was right but at the same time it was wrong because they didn't understand like why I was doing what I was doing and what I believe in and at, in the same token there is no electronics flawed in school but in a situation like that there's every right to have that be caught on film. That's how I personally feel. Right. What do you think about the aggression of the Manchester Police Department? It was uh, out of out of it wasn't necessary to just come up and do that. 
and uh, what do you th- right. What do you think he could have done instead? Just grab me on my shoulder, tell me that I'm under arrest, and uh, just tell me let's go. Officer Murphy, do you feel the uh, force you used on Frank was uh, necessary? I have no comment. You can talk to the, the patrol captain. Yeah? You don't think there's any repercussions for that? I have no comment on it. No so, comment? Nope. You don't want to talk about it? I'm not going to talk about it. It's an open yeah. case. It's an open case? I'm not going to talk about Are it. Are you being investigated for it, or is he? Talk to Lieutenant Legacy, Human Out Division. Well, I tried to call them today and yourselves. You guys didn't answer. Well, I don't know what they're doing. Yeah. I have comment. no comment, so I have nothing else to say to you. Oh, on, okay. Outside, well, I wish you treat people a little more fairly. Speech, proclaim short at conventions, Mr. Mention with no vengeance. I'm free to see him do it. I've been knocked Special thanks to Cop Block for the videos used in that segment. Tonight, our discussion panel features Michelle Seven and new to the show, Ali Havens. Michelle, what do you think the officer, uh, what do you think about him that how he abused his power? Well, Heike, um, what do I think of a cop who beat a kid? smash his face into a table. That cop's lucky that it wasn't one of my two boys or my daughter. That's you know? exactly what I was thinking. I, was, <laughs> I don't have kids, but when I saw the video, I couldn't help but think, you know, just imagining if that was my child or even just having a child in the same school would really make me nervous. I would feel compelled to get my child out of there just because mm-hmm. as it is, you can't, um, like you said, there are no electronics allowed. So even if, you know, I had, uh, give, if I gave my kid a camcorder to try to videotape and keep himself protected, he would not be allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. So that's, that would be a concern of mine for any of the parents that have their kids in school there. Well, you know, you know I homeschool my kids. And um, at this point, you know, they're, uh, the two boys are in high school and my daughter's in college. But um, they're, you know, autonomous and self-educating pretty much at this point. But, um, you know, when we had problems in the household as they were growing up, I either had a really, really clean house or they were doing their schoolwork. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because if they didn't want to do their schoolwork, I'd give them chores. I'd be like, there you go. But you know, um, it begs the question about public schools in the first place. You know, in private school, your, um, your vote counts for a lot more than it does in a public school. Because if I don't like the way you treat my ch- child or, you know, what your rules are, et cetera, I withdraw my money. Right. And the school that. also defended the actions of the officer and said that he did not use excessive force. So that's another concern is that they accept what happened and they even stand behind the officer and his actions. And I would, want, I would wonder, is this typical in the school? Is this the kind of thing that happens all the time and the teachers think it's totally okay? Because, mm-hmm. you know, that's concerning to me mm-hmm. just to, to see my peers be treated this way and um, to, have, to have so many police in there that you know, even if a lot of the police are there to just keep an eye on things or whatever they're... Yeah, why are the police at the school in the first place? Right. <laughs> you know? You know, because I, I guess because kids these days... It's a war zone. <laughs> right. It's a war zone. It's dangerous at school. Right. So, I mean, it, it just it sort of um, takes it to another level where you're not focusing on education anymore. What you're focusing on is making sure, no, making sure that all the students are do, going compliance. along. And, right. So that seems to be what schools are about nowadays. Um, yeah, we're breeding a bunch of, uh, of obedient you know, slaves, in my estimation. Have you, you know? ever been to public school, Michelle? Have you, did you go I to public I went to public school? school for most of my life, not university. But uh, yes, and, and it's changed drastically. You know, and you hear our parents will talk about, um, you know, if they went to Catholic schools, getting the ruler and the excessive discipline, you know, right. uh, physical. Uh, discipline that that uh, occurred back then, and and um, I, I imagine that there are a lot of parents even that would be watching this and see that uh, that scene and, and think to themselves, 
well, that kid ha got what he had coming. He needs to obey. He needs to respect authority. He needs to do what he's told. And and um, gosh, I'm I'm glad I'm raising my kids differently. And it, it begs the question: Do what rights do um, kids in public school have? Because I know that they try to teach you in public school about you know the the kind of uh, oh we're in a democracy, so you know you have all right. these rights. But then I remember there'd always be. A kid in my class that would ask questions. What about our rights? You know, yes. like I, you know, I have to ask permission to go to the restroom. I, I don't feel right. I feel like a slave here. And the teacher says, "Oh, well, you don't have rights in public school." Yes. So I think this video is a great evidence of that that you don't have rights in public school. Well, they're definitely you know preparing um, the the kids that the you know adults of tomorrow to uh, to be obedient and to do what they're told and and if you don't do what you're told then you get your face smashed in the table and the crazy thing is that no one really came to the aid you know why didn't the teachers came to came to try to stop the boy who recording his friend yes. that that seems to from what I saw it seems to be the main focus of the teachers was keeping that video from getting out at all right. and they even um, asked the boy to delete his photo, you know, delete the video and everything Crazy. and, you know, it just, it's about hiding. Mm -hmm. Hide the evidence. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that, um, that my kids, like I said, don't go to public school and, and it's, it's, uh, interesting that as that was pointed out in the video here, I think by a demo, that the teachers are not educating students, as you mentioned, um, about their rights and about, uh, the non-aggression principle. You know, what did that, did that kid who, was, who had his face smashed into the table, did he aggress someone and, and commit a violent crime against someone that required him to be physically uh, restrained like that, you know? It's that, so there would be the excessive, you know, force. Right. Mm -hmm. I, think it, I think it had to do with uh, the disrespecting the officer. And while I don't think that it's the best policy to, you know, to be disrespectful towards, you know, the people that you're around every day at school. I still, in the situation after seeing the video, just do not, cannot in any way justify the actions of the police officer. Right. So you are fairly young and haven't been out of high school for very long, no. I imagine. I graduated from Auburn High in 2009. That's in Alabama. In Auburn, Alabama. Mm -hmm. right. Where are you? Or you go. <laughs> so how did you end up here and um, tell us a little bit about yourself? Well I actually have been wanting to move, uh, I've been wanting to move out, out of Alabama for a while and um, I guess I went to the Pork Define Freedom Festival to uh -huh. see what the people in New Hampshire are like. And Pork Fest I for met. those that have heard about uh, the Free State Project's um, uh, annual get together in Lancaster. Yep, it's, it's really cool um, just camping and you know, trading and having a good time. And uh, I met a lot of really cool people and I was kind of torn between places in New Hampshire to live, but I knew I wanted to move to New Hampshire. And uh, after seeing, I had never actually been to Keene and mm -hmm. I just saw pictures and videos and um, actually saw this program and just, it inspired me to move, so. Well, I remember the day I met you at uh, Vendetta's. You were with your sister, Lauren, who I didn't make the connection initially when she said, hey, it's me, you know? Because <laughs> we had worked on the Ron Paul campaign four years ago mm -hmm. in, in Alabama. Yeah, so um, what does your family think of you being here? My family has been really supportive. I'm really lucky that they all, um, that you know, there there is some apprehension about me moving so far away. Of course, my mom didn't yes. like that so much, but they've all been really supportive, and uh, I think I think they believe in in what I'm doing here. Awesome. And I, you know, I think that I think that I'm gonna, you know, show them that it was a good idea. Great. Well, it's nice to have you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was great, Heike. Thank you, Michelle and Allie. This past Saturday, the International Day of Occupation happened, and even Keen joined in. Free Keen TV was on hand to get this video. Go on. The next motion is whether or not to occupy. My name is Tom McGuire, and I'm from Keene, New Hampshire. It's brand new. It just started this week here in Keene. I've been describing it as an economic civil rights movement. Uh, it's a leaderless movement, so it's what everybody wants to talk about, what the group agenda is.
met a living being. I would say that I think everybody knows deep down inside that we're getting screwed. And these people are probably the vanguard, the first wave of people who are waking up and taking the action to say enough, no more. So I think you may not support them now, but if you think about it, you probably do deep inside and wait until you're ready because I believe you're gonna get there. First thing I would do is turn off your TVs and throw them away. Second thing is get on the internet. Google's good, they censor some things, but just Google it. Google Occupy and then start from there. Start reading, start researching, learn, teach yourselves. Uh, Shauna, right now I'm from Keene. It's a lot more energetic than I thought it would be. I'm still optimistic because it hasn't been successfully co-opted by either the right or the left. I think it's pretty inevitable. I like that they're against murder and theft, really. Representative Steve Lindsay, I live up behind the courthouse near Central Square. And here today you get a lot of younger people, a lot more diverse people. But it is heartening to see uh, what we've worked for for years, some realization going out to the middle and lower class. Well, I'm here because I want some uh, economic justice. Basically, we're looking for reform in these systems. The great underground. They're a culmination of everything I've been thinking of for the last 20 years. Keep it clean, keep it peaceful. It's a good thing. Joining Allie and Michelle for this last segment is Craig, who has stayed overnight at Railroad Square with the Occupy movement. Craig, can you tell the viewers about yourself and the Occupy Keen protest? Yeah, a little bit about myself first. Uh, my name is Craig Rice. I'm from originally from Texas. I've lived in New Hampshire for the better part of 20 years, and I now live in Keene. I've lived here for about a year, and uh, I'm a working man, uh, part of the 99 percent. What does that mean to you, the 99 percent? Because, you know, I went down, I wasn't at the Keene occupation, but I was down in uh, New York City for four days, and you kept hearing that chant, we are the 99 percent, and what I initially had thought, it w you know, of the 1 percent, was that that's basically the banks and the corporate uh, corporatism um, that w the cronyism that was taking place with the uh, government and that mm -hmm. those are that's the one percent mm -hmm. and it seems like the movements kind of moved away from that to just kind of lump anyone that you know has any money as the one percent mm -hmm. which I think is we should be afraid of that you know creating mm -hmm. a class warfare kind of thing Right, I understand. I know there, there's been some concern about uh, not making it into uh, uh, an us versus them uh, or rich versus poor. I don't mind the us versus them yeah. if the them is you know defined as the uh, as the uh, government and the, uh, the mm -hmm. you know the corporate um, yeah. system that has robbed the taxpayer of money and used it to mm -hmm. um, subsidize their losses. Right. Well, I, I, to get straight to your point uh, or your question about the what is the one percent, um, I've, I've got uh, an understanding that the top one percent of, uh, of wealthy individuals, uh, they they actually have forty two percent own forty two percent of the wealth in this country, and you know something you don't ever really hear about that much is actually the next four percent combined with that top 1% owns 69% of the wealth. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the bottom 80% only has 7% of the wealth. I mean, that's... that's and you have a problem with that? Well, the, the, okay, let me just say that uh, that, is a, uh, that is a large inequity it's, it's of, of, in our system. Um, when you realize that over... Well, since wait, like, you said in our system. So what system uh -huh. are you talking about? Well, let's just say in the United States, uh, in a capitalistic system. You think uh, that what we have is a capitalistic system? Yeah, by and large we do, yeah. Yeah, see, I disagree with that. Okay. I well. mean, I think that Ali and I are both Austrian economists, mm -hmm. you know, and so we define it a little differently. What would you say? Well, my, my question for you was, um, do you see, 
one thing that I really like about Austrian economics is explained to me that wealth is something that can be created. There's not a finite amount of wealth. So when you break down who has the money, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're taking it from poor people, that mm -hmm. the people are, are not poor because of the wealthy, that the, it's, you know, there are different factors. It's not a causation type thing. So there's not a finite amount of wealth that's to be shared between everyone. Wealth is, wealth can be created. And if you look at, um, in an ideally, wealth would only be created. And in most situations, the only time in which wealth is destroyed is when human cooperation is inhibited. Right. So, so that is, the, so the free, we would uh, right. say that a free market is required mm -hmm. for a capitalistic society, and, and there is certainly not a free market here. And mm -hmm. when, I mean, I am completely against TARP and the QE1, 2, 3, these bailouts, mm -hmm. as much as I am against any other sort of, you know, subsidies and what have you, um, simply, you know, taking from one to give to another against that person's will, uh, regardless of the altruistic, uh, uh, you know, justification okay. for well, it, I think is fundamentally immoral. How about, how about looking at it in another sense? Okay, uh, since uh, 1980, uh, the average income of wealthy, um, the top 1% wealthy um, individuals in the United States has is, is basically continued to rise, while the um, top, I mean the bottom 90% has been a flat line. A flat do, line. I mean, that's, do you think that that's, that's the, do you think that's a result of a capitalist society, or do you think that's a result of government intervention? I think it's a result of an unfair system. That's that's simply put. I mean, I think I don't like the system either, right. but I don't happen mm -hmm. to think that what we have is a capitalist okay. system. Well, I'm I'm probably not the most knowledgeable the person to to talk about economics with. Um, well, how can we make it more fair? What would you say would be a step that we could do that would make things more fair for people? Uh, get some greater minds in here besides me to figure that out, actually. <laughs> yeah. well, but I know that it can be done. I really believe that. So you, I like the idea of just, you know, raising the level of education and um, per personal responsibility mm -hmm. in things. Just, I just think that that's a moral argument to be had for any situation. You obviously, you know, care a great deal about this because you slept outside yeah and it's yeah, chilly yeah. did you get arrested no no i probably could have if i wanted to um <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah I um, it's not that hard. actually actually the, yeah actually um part of the uh the the whole idea of occupation uh is you have to you know occupy a space and yes and probably doesn't include you know um, going home at night and then come back in the morning so uh, the first night, uh, October of October fifteenth, um, I uh, I really wasn't even planning on on camping out. But then I found out there was only one other person that was willing to do it, and um, there was kind of a snafu because uh, I was going to come back and camp out with that person, and she for some reason didn't think I was coming back. Mm. And when I came back, I was told, "Well, you know, you're on your own now." But I had some friends, some great friends. They actually stayed with me till four o'clock in the morning, and then I spent the next, you know, at three hours before someone came back with some coffee. I actually did get some sleep. Uh, the police did come by and actually said they didn't have a problem with it. It was only the, uh, the second. Yeah, that was that was pretty great. But I, I wonder, you know, you know, it was. I guess it was because no one complained because the second night. I was told that someone had complained and they had to enforce the city ordinance about camping in public places, a, pu a city land. Right, okay, so city land, and that goes back to the issue of property rights. And that 1%, I would like mm -hmm. to see people camping out at the Fed, you know, mm -hmm. and the Federal Reserve. They could, you know, prevent them from, you know, printing money and devaluing the currency mm -hmm. and allow competing currencies would be something that I would suggest. And, and camp at the banks. Bank of America is right down the street. That land's not, that's not private property. It's not, pro it ceased to be private property when the uh, government basically nationalized the banks. And when those banks accepted government funds, basically, you know, mm -hmm. nationalizing them, it ceased to be private. So if I were to be camping, you can bet I'd be camping down what, at on Bank of America. What, on the sidewalk out right there? Oh, no, I'd be in the parking lot. I would, I would, Fill yeah. that place up so that people couldn't even g get into the bank, and I'd be right. educating them on, on um, the uh, the disastrous agenda yeah. that is that the United States government is you know has in cahoots with the banks. Wow, we ought to take a look at that. I I, I actually I didn't you know I was unaware that uh, that that the uh, 
the banks um, were, had a special situation with the with the uh, the the building, you know, the brick and mortar. I didn't know that. What do you mean? Well, I thought you were saying that that Bank of America has some sort of special uh, property rights. Well, I think I think maybe I don't want to put words in your mouth. You can answer yourself. But what my interpretation of what you said was that because of the crony capitalism system we have, um, the collusion and all that, that the property of these banks that are using the government to try to get one up on any of the, any of their competition because they're receiving these funds then you know technically part of what they own if you look at it if you look at taxpayer money as our money mm -hmm. and so we in some part have ownership over that that's right then taxpayers if they're, yeah if they're given absolutely if they're being bailed out then we yeah. then we technically should own the the bank yeah. or whatever property or right you know yeah well i, I don't i don't know if uh, i don't i don't know that much about the whole law situation but i did hear that, that some people went into a bank of america bank to try to get their money out and there was a group of them and that they they, they got arrested mm. for you know for for making a run on the bank you know right trying so, to get their own money yeah, out exactly. of the bank that's yeah. right how dare they yep <laughs> i think well, more people good are trying you. well thank you thanks thank you very much good to be here you. You gonna go out there and spend the night again? Possibly at another at another time. Um, right now, I'd like to figure out, you know, if, if it's uh, if if there's gonna be some more people to do it. Maybe we can Safety kind of clog the system. Thank you for joining us yeah. tonight. As always, contact Freekeen TV by sending an email to tv at freekeen.com. I'm Heike Corser saying good night, Keen.